In this short lecture, you are going to learn about table and column aliases. SQL provides the ability to rename columns or to provide column names for literals or expressions returned by a query. For example, let's take a look at the query you wrote at the end of the previous lecture, which was probably something like this. If you look at the results that you get, you will notice that this column, which corresponds to the new salary, has the expression you used to calculate it as the column name. Also, your task was to provide a list that included the current and the new salaries, but by looking at this result set, it is not completely clear which one is the old and which the new salary, unless the person reading the results knows that the new salary is going to be calculated as the old salary plus a 20% increase. And it is in these kind of situations that the ability to provide column aliases can be very useful. To provide a column alias, you can simply write the alias next to the column you are renaming. Or you can use the optional reserved word as and then provide the column alias. So you could write your query this way. I use the underscore to separate these words because that is how people usually name table columns. But you can actually create columns whose names include blank spaces. For example, I can create a table like this. And then, when I want to use or reference that column, I have to use the double quotes too. And you can also have column aliases defined this way. So we can write your previous query like this. This result set looks better than you think. And in similar way, you can provide aliases to table names also. By now, you probably don't see why you will want to provide an alias for a table, but you will when you start working with more than one table in the same query. To provide an alias for a table, you can do it the same way. You can write the alias next to the table name, and you can also provide aliases inside double quotes if they include blanks. So I could provide an alias for the employee table this way. Where the alias for the employees table is now a single letter, in this case an E. Okay, we are done with aliases by now. See you in the next lecture.